know, uh, uh, thank you, Dr. F, for those really kind words. It's really humbling to hear um, you say those things. You, you're a man of true intellect, honor, and, and you have a great beard. Uh, I tried growing one for today's occasion. What do you guys think? It's been five weeks. I haven't shaved. What are you laughing at? Um, before I begin, I do want to make a quick uh, change to you guys' program where it says commencement speaker and a commencement address. It should actually say 15 minutes of incoherent crying and sobbing, <laughs> followed by five minutes of awkward silence. <laughs> Hello, graduates. Uh, today, I'm, uh, today, I'm only talking to you guys but I'm going to occasionally look up at the crowd um, to keep myself from crying. I can do it. Uh, so as your teacher, um, that's how you best knew me. Uh, I wasn't often, you know, in my feelings, um, as you guys say sometimes. I didn't, I didn't get to say all the wonderful things I think about you and hope for you and believe about you out loud. You know, maybe, maybe I just didn't want things to get too awkward in the classroom, or maybe I just wasn't man enough to say those things out loud. But if I could have your permission today to step out of that teacher role and, and be in those feelings for the next 10 minutes or so, um, I'd like to say that I love you, and I'm very proud of you. When I was first asked to speak today, uh, I had a pretty big freak-out moment, because I've never given a commencement address before. Uh, and I started to panic, and I, and I started to feel really bad for you guys, that you would have your, your crying and bumbling and nerdy science teacher as your commencement address speaker, and I thought, oh, they deserve so much better. <laughs> but worry not. For every word that I say to you today has been meticulously rehearsed, and every word has been written down verbatim in my notes. To, so that I will not cry, and so that I will not bumble. Even if you see so much as look and smile at you, that too has been written in my notes and rehearsed. <laughs> and you know, I also did what any true scholar of the texts would do, any aspiring orator, I quickly went to Google and Wikipedia uh, for, for good commencement address materials, and I found some really good quotes for you that I would like to share. Um, Be the change that you wish to see in the world, Mahatma Gandhi. Each of us comes from the Creator with wisps of glory trailing after them, Maya Angelou. Our lives begin to end the very moment we stop Speaking about the things that matter. Dr. Martin Luther King. Hashtag YOLO. <laughs> the last words of every teenager before they do something stupid. <laughs> you know, those are all very well and good quotes. Maybe appropriate for a late night Facebook update or an inspiring meme. But we know each other. And I thought, how many commencement address speakers know the first, middle, and last name of each of their graduates? Just me. And so how could I possibly do, reduce all that we've seen and all that we've done together, all that we've laughed about and cried about, into a quote made for the masses? Raj and Nate, I've known you guys combined for almost 10 years. Nate, I remember when you were about five foot tall. And now I have to look up at you when I speak. Raj, I remember when, well, you're still almost five foot tall, but I remember you back then. <laughs> and guys, it's, it's hard to imagine a world where I don't hear your voices or see your faces every day. Taya, Jesse, in the first weeks that we met each other, we cried in each other's arms. Andre, you are a man of deep thought and honor, and I'm glad to call you friend, but you are also a man of intensely smelly farts. <laughs> your, your silent but deadlies are indeed deadly. 
And, in, and indeed, I will never forget you. You know, our, our bonds run deep through time and through emotion. And as with all tight-knit families, don't act like you don't fart. <laughs> Gas. And when I look at you now and I think about all that we've seen and done and, and who you guys are, SUA graduates, you guys are my expectation and my joy. And you got me out of bed every morning. It says to cry in my notes right here. <laughs> and speaking to you today, um, is one of the greatest privileges of my life. Thank you. I'm not done yet. <laughs> and while I still have your attention and, and permission to be, you know, inside my feelings, I want to share with you all a dream I had. It was a very, very vivid dream, the kind that after you wake up, you can't stop thinking about it, and you know there must be some deeper meaning, and you just need to tell somebody about it. This dream could not have just been for my mind alone. In class of 2014, I believe this dream was for you. As you know, I have no children, and before you think that's, I'm going to have any, this is not where I'm going. But I do have two dogs, and I love and care for them dearly, I think. Uh, but in this dream that took place in my house, I had a son, and it was his first birthday. And in my dream, I, I dreamt I'd spent all my time raising my dogs and teaching them tricks that I had neglected my son until this day, and I was holding him in my hands, there was a birthday cake, and everyone was having a great time, banners, and everyone was laughing except for me. And I looked down at this child, and I realized, oh my God, I have never hoped for this child. I've never thought of what he could become. And I realized that maybe the things I spend my time on aren't that important. I can never hope for my dogs. I can never hope that they become doctors. I can never hope that they become successful business owners or world travelers. I can never hope that my dogs meet a nice man and settle down and have a family. <laughs> I can never hope that they become lovers of the same music or science fiction or the arts and sciences that I love. But I, what I can't hope for them, I can hope for you guys. My dogs are stuck in their only phase of their life, but you guys are beings of endless possibilities. And this is what it means to be human, right? What separates us from the rest of earthly creation, that we have the ability to go from glory to glory, to become better, and to hope for each other as we become better together. Story time. So once upon a time, there was a, there was a small village in what is now modern Tibet. And, and this old man said, I want to take all the young people of age and we're going to climb a mountain, the, cl the tallest one around. And he took all the, all the students and this one little girl. And they marched through these huge grass fields for miles. They went through these rivers, swam through them. They passed yaks, other villages, and then they climbed uphill for a good two miles through forest, and the kids were complaining, my feet hurt. I don't want to do this. When am I going to use this in my everyday lives? <laughs> but finally, after many hours, the old man and, and the kids and the little girl got to the top. And, they, and there was a cabin there with fresh water, fresh fruit, a beautiful view. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> and when they got to the top, the old man saw three things. First, all the students ran to the cliff and they looked out over at all the things that they had accomplished. They saw that green field. That green field was the size of Miss G's cell phone screen. They saw the rivers. They looked like lines on a paper. They saw the yaks. They looked like ants. Even their own village where they came from looked very small compared to the new view that they had. Next, he saw all the children run to the cabin, and they had a great time. They ate the fruit, they jumped on the beds, they laughed and joked. And they looked at each other and smiled because they were friends and they did something together. Kind of corny, I know, but this is you, class of 2014, in case you didn't get it already. Oh, I get it. <laughs> You've climbed a huge mountain today to graduate, 
and now you have these amazing views. Go ahead, take a look around you, really. Look around at all the friends and all the family that have been endlessly hoping for you. Endlessly hoping for you. Some of these people have been hoping for you from the moment that you were born. Look and think of your teachers, old and new, good and bad. <laughs> they were your guides on this journey to graduation, prodding you with quadratic equations and college prep essays, tech time, focus, Shakespearean sonnets in iambic pentameter, <laughs> chemical stoichiometry, and yes, the dreaded packets and red pen of Dr. Friedland. <laughs> and now look at each other. Go ahead. Let's not sugarcoat things. You've been through some things, class of 2014. And no one knows your struggles but you and your creator. You made it despite a lot of hurt, the odds, a lot of haters. A lot of people said you couldn't do it. Justin and Andrew said it really well. Um, there's been many deep pains on this journey, pains that no one your age should have to know. Your view did not come easy. It's a good view. Enjoy it. And let's be even more honest for a second. There are some people who aren't here. They are also part of this view. For whatever reason, known or unknown, they are not here. And even though it's a packed house, there are some empty seats. Process their absence in a way that makes you a better, stronger person. The old man looked around, but he couldn't find one of the students. He couldn't find the girl. And he looked at the cliff, she wasn't there. She looked, he looked at the house, she wasn't there. But then he finally found her in this clearing in the forest. And, and she was just kind of looking around and looking up. And he went up to her and says, little girl, what's the matter? Don't you like the view? She says, yes, it's very nice. Don't you like the house? Yes, it's very nice. But and the little girl smiled and she looked up. She says, but I want to know what this mountain looks like from that mountain over there. This is the third view. This is the view that only humans get to have. Only humans that hope for each other and allow themselves to be hoped for. All these people here today, whether in flesh or in spirit, you know, we have not hoped and prayed and cried over for you, for you to stop looking up after your 20th birthday. So, class of 2014, what's next? What will you see when you look up? Aaliyah, will you intentionally challenge yourself to find a challenge worthy of your fierceness? Abdi, what will you do to become more like Mike so that you can take care of other people the way he took care of you? Dia, you are headed to an elite tier of learning where only 1% of the population ever gets to see, and you will be filled with precious knowledge what will you do to change the world? And what will you do, Raj, to make sure your son, Talon, climbs even higher mountains than you? Oh, but bang, hashtag YOLO. Shouldn't we live in the moment? No, you should not live in the moment. <laughs> to, live in the, to live in the moment is nonsense. Enjoy the moment, yes. Save the moment, yes. But don't live there. Make sure you have, find more moments like this and look up. Hope and dream for yourself and find other good people that will cry over you and pray for you and hope for you when you have no hope for yourself. Find people who will help you see that next mountain. The Proverbs say that the wise face their futures and smile. So class of, two thir class of 2014, smile. Because there's still so much for you to accomplish. Abdi, Aliyah, Nate, Dia, Jesse, Andre, Taya, Raj. They say that only the blessed have a hard time saying goodbye. And today I feel blessed. So goodbye for now. Enjoy the view. And congratulations. <laughs>